Why are we the way we are? And why are we struggling the way we're struggling? And, and what if we knew a little bit more about ourselves? How would that change the way reality works? And that stuff's massively important to me because it's literally like magic. If someone came to you and said, look, if I taught you a couple spells that could change the way you live, you just cast a spell, and all of a sudden, everything gets a little bit easier that day, you fall in love, you get the right job, you're all, it's just magic. Or, you know, someone goes, well, no, it's quantum physics, that's how it works. And you go, what do you mean? Go, like, no, no, that's literally how it works. What you think becomes reality. And that's how I escape by learning continuously that reality is not even what you think it is. Are these on? Those aren't on, are they? Let's get some sound. It's not often I get to play guitar without anybody else here. A few hours from now, we'll walk out here and it'll be deafening. It'll be thousands and thousands of bodies. Completely opposite of right now where it's like bacon and every noise you can hear it kind of like echo like through this place. It's pretty wild. And it all contains the energy of so many people. And the cool thing about music is, is they learn that people's brain waves map up with each other during music, during live shows. And they all map up with what's coming from the musician themselves. So it's a frequency thing that pulls everyone together, you know? And you really feel as a musician, because once everyone's mapped up with what you're doing, you feel the strength of all that back at you. It's wild. Right now in here, it's like the calm before the storm. And when the storm hits, it's just, it's just the next level shit. It's just awesome. I got a story for you. The first show we ever played. First show. It was a bar in San Diego. And so I go down there and I go, we really want to play, play here. Because I'm just looking at where live local bands play. And the guy goes, okay. And I go, and he goes, this is how you get paid. I'm going to give you 50 tickets and you could sell those. And whatever ones you sell, you get to keep the money. And so I'm like, cool. We show up to play. I'm like, here's all 50 tickets. I'm like, I don't know anyone that's 21, you know? And he's like, fuck, okay. Well, you get to play, it's like seven o'clock at a bar. Nobody's in there. The only person that's in there was the dude that gave me the ticket. So as we're playing, he's sweeping the fucking floor and taking the chairs off the tables. And he just keeps looking at us and we're playing. My friends that would be like our, our roadies couldn't come in either. So they're outside the door. They only let us come in underage to play the songs and leave. So we get done with like a 20 minute set. He puts the broom down. He's still the only dude. He goes, don't break up. He's, I hear something here. You got to figure it out, but I hear something here. But it was so cool because that one little fucking moment made me feel like someone believed in us. Even as we got bigger, you could play in front of like a thousand people, but if one dude came up and genuinely meant something cool, like it meant so much to me. Like I was like, fuck. Have you ever stopped to think about how crazy it is that Mark's parents helped you co-sign for your first strat, and now you have one of the all-time most selling Fender signature models. I don't really know what's crazier, the fact that somebody would co-sign anything with me, or the fact that my guitar would like end up being something that has done so well. Like I just wanted to be able to turn it up and go, make it super simple and hot rod it out. But to bring this one back though, and like have my own model, like it's, it's crazy that people care. You've about... never been sentimental about your guitars. No. The only one I've ever seen you be sentimental about is the original. The one, you're the original. Yeah. The original Strat. You found all the old pictures of it. You yep. found all the old stickers and you put it back together yeah. for me. Yeah. And you were tripping. Yeah, you opened the door. You were like, what the fuck? Yeah, I was <laughs> tripping to see that again. And it looked exactly like it had been restored to in the Damn It era. But it was also the same day that you were like, I actually just had lunch with Mark and Travis. I had a feeling that was coming based on your, you know, your conversations with Mark being sick. You've always had that love for Blink. You know? That's a wild thing. You bring back that guitar on that day. That's interesting. And how that all really started the return to Fender. Yeah. And we toured with the idea of like asking Schultz if he could make a 10% bigger strap. Yeah. <laughs> because like of us. the way the body sits, Cause my, you know? Because my body's 10% bigger than it used yeah. to be. <laughs> and it was just like, what about the Starcaster, which is a guitar? As soon as I heard that name, I was like, Starcaster. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Sign me up. 
which is exactly where, you know, like, it was a mix between the two worlds. A little bit of Fender, a little bit of your, your hollow body life that was in there. Yeah. Now I look at it, I'm like, how could you not be fucking making this guitar? This thing is so sick. It's just fucking smooth, it's light, yeah. it plays well. It feels like it's real, like, craftsmanship, but it, it's weird. It's like it shows the evolution of me as a guitar player and things I'm into, but there's still kind of that hallmark of where I came from and what I'm about. You've now reached a lot of kids and inspired them to pick up their first guitar. I mean, all these, like, nine-year-olds that are like, I learned every one and of your songs. And they're better than you. And they're better than me. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> these kids yeah. are so young. I learned every one of your songs. I'm like, dude, get out of here. I'll hit you. Chill out. Wow. I've never been in one of these before. The sound is bizarre. It's um, almost 360 degrees when you're standing in there. That's sick. So this is why this guitar is so cool. Number one, it's called a Starcaster. We're sitting in an observatory. That's the most important thing. It goes with space. It expands your mind. And what I did was I took out all the extra pickups, took out all the extra knobs and shit. So you can just kind of go on and off, on and off, which is easy. We added this old school 70s style headstock because I think it rounds out the weight of the guitar a little bit better. On this particular one, we have black hardware, but really all the star casters that we're doing are, are matte color, you know, like the flat finish. I just think it's more modern. I think it's cooler. I've got my name fucking on the back here. Got a logo of me, a little cartoon version of me up there. But like a couple, uh, Months ago, there's about 150 scholars of cool that got together up in the mountains, um, and they all figured out that this was the coolest thing ever made. So this is certified cool by the scholars of cool. So I think that's what's important as well for you to know. Buy it. So that'll start getting faster and faster until it gets to its speed that it wants to go. So it's like perfectly calibrated. Perfectly calibrated to follow the stars. Dude, it's really interesting. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, yeah. When you look at other stars that have planets, is there always a planet in each orbital path? There are so many millions of galaxies with millions of stars, and all of them have got planets. Yeah, so much out there. Yeah. And we're just scratching the surface. Before music and punk rock, was there a creative spirit from family or friends that you know entered your life in another way? My dad listened to sports radio all day. My mom was a hardcore, gnarly Christian, like just fucking gospel type music and shit. Not even gospel, just like really shit church music. And uh, a lot of the problems in my family was that duality where my dad wasn't religious, but my mom was. And uh, I, I was stuck in the middle being forced to go to church, so I actually learned how to sing as a young kid going to church. All that shit seemed fucking crazy to me as I got older. I was like, this shit's like fucking doesn't make sense to me at all. But I didn't have any support in the house for anything. Like, even my first guitar, my first real guitar, my first guitar, my friends, these kids at the church I was forced to go to, bought from a garage sale and put it together and fixed it and gave it to me like for like 40 bucks. They put it there because they, they knew, because I always played it at their house. When you have nothing and you have no money and school sucks and your fucking family life is, is, is all over the map and like you actually get a work ethic where you're gonna like do anything you can to escape, anything, you know? I was fortunate enough to have some of that ethic um, you know, to like, to have a North Star, to be shooting for something, to correct what was done to me and, and, and not do it to my kids, you know, and, and like channel all that frustration and anger and craziness, you know, into a good thing, into a good cause, I guess. If I'm not playing music or recording it or whatever, or like thinking about the storytelling of what's possible, but it all starts with like music. Like I don't have anything in my life if I didn't start with music. Every opportunity I have is because of being in a band. I felt like I could do no wrong. I felt like on the last time I was locked in the pocket. I was so mapped up in the frequency of the song. We have a crazy story now. I mean, plane crashes and cancer and multiple breakups in the band, you know, and like so much crazy shit. Like 
we've become that story, you know? You grew up with these bands that have these stories, and you're like, oh shit, like a big legacy, like, whoa, they've been around for a long time, and they've accomplished all these things, and like, they've had all these crazy things happen. And then like, one day you're like looking in the mirror, and you're like, oh fuck, we're kind of those guys now, you know, how did that happen? Blink's all about growing up. I really love where we're at and what we're doing. I think it's really special. But when we play, we fucking, we shred, you know? And like, we give it literally everything we got. Like, literally everything we got. It's where we all walk off stage, we're like, we might die. It feels like I'm fucking dying. But cool, that was a good show. 